Okay, now we're going to focus on what happens when we add specific components to a network and how that, that triggers movement on the Smith chart. So first we're going to look at adding a series inductor to a random load. So here I have a random load impedance, R1 plus JX1, and we're going to add a series inductance, JXL, and look to see what the impedance is looking into the network after we've added the inductor. So as you might expect, the impedance ZT looking into the network is now R plus J X1 plus XL. You can see that adding the inductor didn't change the real part of the impedance, it only changed the imaginary part of the impedance. And so if we look at how this triggers movement on the Smith chart, if we have an impedance labeled Z on the Smith chart that has a reactance labeled as X1, which we read from the edge of the chart, if we add that series inductance, it's going to move on a line of constant resistance increasing as we increase frequency or inductance towards the open circuit on the Smith chart. And the open circuit on the Smith chart is over here. We can read the final value off of the chart by noting what the final value of the reactance is from the edge of the chart. So the inductance would just be the difference between the initial reactance value and the final reactance value. Okay, so we're going to do the same exercise, but we're going to now look at what happens when we add a series capacitance. So here are our total impedance, ZT, looking into the capacitor is Z plus I should say Z minus JXC, since the reactance of the capacitance is negative. Or in other words, the total impedance is R plus J times the initial reactance minus the capacitive reactance. And if we were to plot this on a chart, we would see that the capacitor would cause movement on a line of constant resistance downward on the chart and that this would be decreasing with frequency or with uh, increasing capacitance. Much like before we would we could read the final value of the reactance from the edge of the chart x sub f and x sub f is equal to x1 minus xc. Okay so we can come up with some movement rules based upon what we've just observed. If we increase the series inductance or the center frequency of operation, then we move up on a line of constant resistance on the Smith chart. If we add a capacitor that has a decreasing series capacitance value or a decreasing frequency, it moves down on a line of constant resistance on the chart. We can calculate the value of the reactance and hence the inductance or capacitance using the values that we read from the chart. In principle, to find the value of the capacitance or the inductance, we find the reactance from the other edge of the chart, subtract the initial reactance, unnormalize by multiplying by the characteristic impedance, and then we find our inductance or capacitance using the standard formula. In other words, inductance is equal to reactance over frequency, capacitance is equal to one over reactance times frequency. Now let's look at what happens if we add a shunt component. Sorry, I should say, now let's look at what happens if we add a series resistor. Here we're going to add a series resistor with a normalized value of little r. And if we look at the impedance, we would see that the impedance is now equal to r1 plus r minus j x one and this makes sense when we add a series resistance that has no reactants we only change the resistive part of the matching network if we plot what happens on the chart we're going to move towards the open circuit line on a line of constant reactance remember that our open circuit line is right where I'm drawing this dot.
So in general, our movement rules can now be defined. If we increase resistance, it moves towards an open circuit on the line of constant reactance, and it is frequency independent as the resistor has no frequency dependence for its impedance. To read the value of resistance off the chart, we would read the initial resistance value, R1, uh, and subtract that from the final resistance value, Rf, and unnormalize by multiplying by Z0, the characteristic impedance. So now we'll see what happens when we add a shunt component.